Good day, grade 10. In this set of lessons, we're going to be preparing for your final exam. Um, so this is final exam prep, and we're going to do this by going through two exam papers. And this week, we're going to go through paper one, and next week, we're going to go through paper two. Now, you can either download and print the exam paper, put it on the system, or you can go through the videos. But what I'd like to suggest you do is every time you go through the video, if you get to a question, pause the video, decide on your answer, and then let the video play and see if you're right, okay? Please don't use the OER method. I've mentioned this before where you just let the video run and then when you sit, when I say the correct answer you go oh yeah of course because that doesn't work okay because in the exam you don't have someone explaining it or telling you what the OER method and what the final answer is okay so you have to try and work it out by yourself first right so let's start with the multiple choice this lesson is purely on the multiple choice questions of the paper one it says which of the following is the correct definition for acceleration so this is a pure theory question where acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time so now all we need to do is match that with one of these so it's definitely not the speed of motion Rate of change of velocity is a different way of saying delta V over delta T. So it might be correct. Let's just move on. It's a force. No, it's not. Change in position divided by time taken. No, that is velocity. So therefore, the correct answer is rate of change of velocity. And the reason I do this, grade tens, is to show you that you can actually eliminate some of the obvious incorrect answers before you go along. So even if you have to do... Um, an educated guess which I really prefer you not to do but if you have to make an educated guess at least make it educated by crossing out or cancelling out the things you know are definitely the incorrect answer right let's move on to your second question it says the following velocity versus time graph so this is velocity versus time graph describes the motion of the object for questions 1.2 and 1.3 the sketch graphs are not drawn to scale okay now it says, which is the correct displacement versus time graph for the above motion? Okay, so yeah, we've got a constant velocity. So it's a constant velocity. Okay, and yeah, what's happening? He is still moving forward, but he is slowing down. His velocity is decreasing. So he's definitely moving forward. So there has to definitely be displacement. So it cannot be... A and it cannot be C because he's definitely got displacement. Now if this is a constant velocity and it's a constant positive velocity it means the displacement has to be positive. So you don't even have to worry about the second part of the graph it has to obviously be B but just let's check this. This bit here do you see that it is slowing down? This is slowing down so therefore this curve is a negative curve it's moving slowing down slowly and that's exactly what's happening here. So the correct answer for the displacement versus time graph is B. Now let's move on to question 1.3. Which is the correct acceleration versus time graph for the same motion? What is the correct acceleration versus time? So if you're going through constant velocity, is there any acceleration? And the answer is no. So therefore we want something that has a zero acceleration. So D is definitely out. Gone. Okay, so now we've got a, B, and C. Okay, and C is definitely gone because we need a zero acceleration. So it's either A or B. Right. Now the next thing you need to know is that this here gives us a acceleration, but it's a constant acceleration, constant negative acceleration. The acceleration is not changing. It's constant because it's a straight line. So the correct answer has to be B. Right, let's move on to the next question. Which one of the following statements is correct? All waves are transverse, longitudinal, tra transmit energy, or travel through vacuum. So what do we know about waves? We know that waves are either transverse, I don't know why I did that, sorry. Transverse, or they are longitudinal. Okay, so therefore not all waves are transverse or longitudinal. And what's special about longitudinal waves is they cannot travel through a vacuum. That's why there is no sound in outer space. Therefore, not all of them travel through a vacuum. So therefore the correct answer is yes, all waves transmit energy. Right, let's move on. 
Which one of the following statements regarding electromagnetic waves is correct? In a vacuum, all electromagnetic waves have the same. Now, do you remember that electromagnetic waves, what do we know? We know that electromagnetic waves um, are transverse waves and we know that they travel through a vacuum and we know that they change in frequency and wavelength. How do we know this? Because we've got the very high frequency ones such as your gamma rays and then they go all the way down to your low frequency or long wavelength which are your radio waves, your radio waves. So therefore we know radio waves. Therefore we know that the changes in frequency and wavelength. So frequency and wavelength are definitely not going to remain the same. Amplitude has got to do with the size of the wave. So if you're thinking sound, amplitude is how loud the wave is. Okay, so the bigger the amplitude, the louder, and the smaller the amplitude, the less. So amplitude can change. So what remains same? The speed. And we know this because the speed of all electromagnetic waves in a vacuum is 3 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is the speed of light. And why? Because light is an electromagnetic wave. Okay, let's move on. Direction of the magnetic field lines of a magnet it is always towards its North Pole. Okay, I'm not even discussing this with you. Learn it. It's the North Pole. Moving on. Which of the following is not a vector? So vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Okay, it has to have magnitude and direction. Okay, so we know that acceleration is a vector. We know that anything where there is a vector multiplied by a scalar, we end up with a vector. And similarly, a vector divided by a scalar, we end up with a vector. But a scalar divided by a scalar, that dude there, that's not a vector. Distance is a scalar. Distance is just how far you go. We don't care about in what direction. And time, as far as we're concerned, keeps marching forward. Therefore, C there is a scalar divided by a scalar, and therefore it is not a vector. So you guys need to know this. You need to know that a vector times a scalar is a vector, and a vector divided by a scalar is also a vector. Right, moving on. An object which is positively charged has. Okay. So when we're talking about charges, what are the only charges that move? Are they protons or electrons? Well, we know that the only charges that move are electrons. Protons are stuck in the nucleus. So it cannot be that they lost protons or gained protons. Okay, now we need to think about the electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. So if we lose some of them, what do we become? We become positively charged. So the correct answer has to be B. Which one of the following is the unit of measurement for the rate of flow of charge? The rate of flow of charge. Hmm. Okay, so rate of flow is actually another word for current. This is current. If you think about it, Q equals IT, therefore I is equal to Q over T. That's on your formula sheet. So therefore, you've got that current is the rate of flow of charge. So let's look at our units of measurements here. Ohm is used for resistance. The volt is measured, uh, measures our potential difference. A coulomb measures charge, how much charge you have. So obviously it's ampere, which is your current. Now let's look at these three graphs. We have got wave one, wave two, and wave three. And you'll notice that this one has got a bigger amplitude. Okay, and this one has got a bigger frequency. Okay, than the other two. Right, so now let's look at this. It says, the wave of the sound with the highest pitch. Well, what you need to know is that pitch relates to frequency. The one with the highest frequency is going to have the highest pitch. So therefore, it is either this one or this one. 
Now it says the wave of the lowest status sound. And remember that amplitude is re reflects loudness. The bigger the amplitude, the bigger the sound. Okay, the louder the sound. So therefore that is wave two. So therefore the correct answer is B. Right, great tens. So that are the, those are the multiple choice questions for paper one. Join me for the rest of the lessons where we go through the long questions. Have a great day.